Hello and welcome to the next of our Leicester Lunchtime concert series. Today I'm joined by three gentlemen and they are the Mithras Trio. There's Yonel, Leo and Dominic. And I, what I've done is I'm recording them in four squares so you can see all of them at the same time. I thought that might be ring the changes. As you can see, the virtual concert hall is behind me. And at the beginning of September, these three brave people people ventured out from their homes to come to Leicester to record in our venue so that our audience have some memory of the sound of that beautiful hall and that beautiful piano and also it's going on the internet so it's widely available and you're very welcome if you're new to our series do look for the other ones on YouTube so gentlemen welcome thank you thank hello you. thank you you know where are you right now uh, I am in uh, Moldova right now in my home country. Yes, I came here to see my family and then I come back to London to rehearse with these guys. Of course, after the customary two week- uh, Miss, Miss quarantine. Quarantina. Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's different things being talked about to do with um, shortening the quarantine time. But at the moment, yeah, it's, it's two weeks. I mean, we just lost the viola player for a, a project next week, uh, but we managed to replace him but it's surprising how many people are getting stuck with these quarantine laws but um is it true that the czars of russia used to get their red wine from moldova from, from moldova oh yes of course even the queen elizabeth has got uh, a certain uh, a certain wine from the 1980s i believe really? which apparently was a very good year yeah I, oh, well, at I'll least ask, that's I, what I, I heard. I heard that. Next time I see her, collection. I'll ask her about yes. it. <laughs> in her personal <laughs> collection. She's got a bottle from, I can't remember which year exactly, but apparently it was like a very dry year. So the, the, the taste of the wine should be very good. Yeah. That's very interesting. I mean, I, we, uh, where I teach in Germany, we had a whole line of incredible Moldovan bassoonists. I mean, they were extraordinary and I did some chamber coaching with one of them and he gave me a bottle of wine and I was like oh yeah that's that's very nice then one night I opened it I went oh that's really seriously lovely so you must bring back some wine for the boys <laughs> yes but of course nothing compares to the homemade wine actually my dad he's he made his own wine he made about like 50 50 60 liters of wine from the grapes uh, like from uh, the vineyard uh, wow. of my grand granddad so yesterday, as I arrived home, he gave me a little bit to try of this freshly made red wine. It was very special. Very, very special, special indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly drooling, sorry. <laughs> I'll bring you some. <laughs> oh, that's a, I'm gonna keep you to that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was angling, hoping you might say that. That's wonderful. Leo, it's great to see you're in London, right? Yeah, yeah. No, London, yeah. Thank you so much to the three of you for doing this concert for us. It's going to be wonderful. Would you like to tell us a little bit about, I mean, we've got three pieces. We've got a quite substantial Haydn piano trio. T tell us a little bit about that. What, how many movements is it? And is it one that you three particularly enjoy playing? Yeah, I think we love it. It's a, it's a three movement trio. Um, it's one of his later trios. It's actually written after Beethoven's Opus 1s. So it's 1797, I think. Um, very late and very weird. All the all three movements are weird. So it starts with um, texturally, we Yanel and I are plucking, which is odd in itself. And also the harmony moves sort of entirely in parallel between the bass and the, the melody. So it's, it's sort of quirky and odd. Sounds and the great. second movement, yeah, yeah. And the second movement also is um, is very strange. It's it's uh, Baroque inspired, I think. It has a, a walking bass line that starts with the three of us playing it all together. Um, and then this the, the bass line sort of continues through the whole movement in this big crescendo. And you have an obligato melody that starts in the piano and then passes across and the whole thing kind of builds. Um, wow. Yeah, and I think the last movement's just a sort of fun Haydn y uh, jog in the park sort of movement. Lots of lovely piano action, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Dominic, um, it's it's wonderful, isn't it, to play Haydn? Because he I always feel that with Haydn, he he makes the sound, it's easy to make a beautiful sound in Haydn for some reason. It's a bit like playing Mendelssohn. There's a way that the there's something about it which just feels right. I always think Haydn sounds so great on the modern piano. And um, of course, we're very lucky 
in Leicester with our piano, did you enjoy making its acquaintance? I absolutely did. It's a beautiful instrument. So uh, yeah, yeah, and the, just actually spent quite a lot of money having it um, reconditioned last year. And it's not had that much playing because of what's happened. So it was it's very fresh for you, I hope. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice, especially in Haydn. You really need an instrument that can sort of sparkle, and you can get a lot of of life out of it, which absolutely, so. yeah, and um, and you started the program with a piece by Lily Boulanger, and um, and she was, I mean, it's, it's people always say it's a tragedy she died so young, but at least we have some music by her, as opposed to so many great composers that could have been that just because of the social norms we never heard. I mean, there's a there's a Russian composer. Um, uh, I heard of recently. There's only one piece by her, one piece in entirety, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But um, at least so I, I don't know this Lily Boulanger trio. Is it, is it something beautiful? Do you love it? Yeah. So this was originally a violin and piano piece, or it wow. was been arranged for. She arranged it for cello and for flute as well, and then. Oh, it's a that of piece. version, and right. also it's her arrangement for piano trio as well. Um, I think it's one of the last pieces, or it might actually be the last piece that she ever finished. It was uh, in 1917, so Gosh, um, yes. before she died. But it's it's quite a it's a very sort of uh, light-hearted, carefree uh, sort of. Uh, a really fun piece, um, sort of quite uh, French in style, a little bit more kind of in the style of Debussy or someone like that than some of Lily Boulanger's writing. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think it's a very nice way to start the concert because in a way you kind of, you, you sort of let the audience in in gently with that. And, um, but then it, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm so pleased you're playing um, Samuel College Taylor because I think this is um, this is a really major major composer. I mean, how how we've ever forgotten about him for any length of time? I mean, for me, he is kind of like a British Mendelssohn, or but then later as well. I mean, I've just played the last year played the Nonet for the first time. Have you guys heard that piece? Really, no, no. Not sure. That that is a really really great piece, and the the, the music for it is now freely available and it's uh so it's like um string trio double bass piano oboe clarinet bassoon horn um and it it's just absolutely it, exactly the same way as i just described with haydn and with mendelssohn it's so beautifully done there's so much mathematical beauty in it that it sounds really really beautiful and it feels beautiful to play so how's how's the piano trio yeah and you're playing as it's you're playing two movements of it. Are we still allowed? I mean, do you still call it Negro Melodies? Is that the official title of it? Well, yes. Yes. Yes, I think so. Because I was yes. interested recently that somebody said that uh, Poulenc's Rhapsody Negre should probably be called Rhapsody Africain. Um, mm. But I suppose that um, Negro Melodies is, is Coleridge Teller's own title for it. So he can call it whatever he likes, perhaps. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. but, they originally died, but it's, it's a fascinating story. It's a fascinating story about him, isn't it? That he, you know, about him, him composing because they all composed, and because of because of Stanford saying that at the Royal College that every single musician that studied at the Royal College should learn composition, and that's why he started to compose. And I mean, that's and he, before that he would have been one of the, you know, probably a world leading violinist, and he probably still was in some ways. So how are these pieces, what do these pieces feel like to play? Uh, I think we had, lot of, had lots of fun playing them and they're contrasting. And they're, I were actually thinking of um, actually playing one of them as encore in our future concerts because it's just so fresh. And it's something that people don't usually play. And I think it should be played more, more often and made um, more sort of um, um, heard Sta standard, yeah, to, heard. to the wider range of people. Well, I mean, I just wanted to say, I, I wider mean, public. The, the three of you 
it's it's so wonderful to have you um dominic this is not your first visit and not your last but <laughs> um, it's i just want to say that it, it that i want you all to come back when when we get going i want you to meet our our wonderful leicester audience they're they're very special they're very knowing very knowledgeable audience um and they would love you and i know they're going to love you now thank you for presenting such a diverse program i know it was our, our well, my my kind of conditions that i've i've imposed but you've rose you've rose to that challenge fantastically and i think it's a beautiful program and i so look forward to hearing it and uh, and i'm sure our audience will enjoy it thank you so much for your time guys thank Thanks. you pleasure